Shalom, Berachim Habayim. Welcome to our home in Fort Lauderdale. I'm Neil and this is my wife, Jamie. Shalom. And this is Jewish Jewels, a program dedicated to glorifying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and lifting up his son, the Messiah, Yeshua. We have opened the past 20 programs of this series on the Hebrew Aleph Bet with the same word, Shalom. Today, on this, our next to the last program, we will finally explain that special Hebrew word and the letter that it begins with. The letter is perhaps the spiritually richest, deepest, most meaningful letter in the entire Aleph Bet. Now let's hear from Dr. Danny Ben-Gigi, our esteemed Hebrew expert, about this week's letter. Well, Dr. Ben-Gigi, here we are on the next to the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, number 21. What is it and what's its word picture? The letter, number 21, is the letter Shin or Sin. The di sin. The difference okay. between them is the same letter. That on the right-hand side on the top, it's a sheen. That on the left-hand side on the top, it's sin. So that one will sound, the sin, sin will sound like an S in English. The sheen will sound like an S-H in English. Same letter, slightly different sound. And the word picture? The word picture of the letter sin or sheen is exactly what it looks like. If you draw, if you look at the picture of that letter, you can see teeth there. Mm -hmm and it stands for destroying or devouring. Devouring, in, right. Devouring, and indeed in many words, one of the examples we did a few weeks ago when we talk about the esh in the letter yes. Aleph, the letter esh included the Aleph was the strong or leading, and the sheen in that word, in that word stood for devourer, destroyer. Mm -hmm. So esh was the strong devourer, the strong fire. destroyer. Fire, right. right. Um, now, how about the enemy? Let's talk about the enemy. Or an, another form of destruction or devouring. Maybe the most, the worst word in the world about destruction and devouring is in the name Satan himself, Satan. Satan. Uh, literally, what does it mean? Satan literally means well. In the pictures, this is Frank Sickens. Uh, in his book, Hebrew Word Pictures, showed it. Okay. And he just simply he did not reinvent the wheel, but he broke it down to the picture. Shin is a devouring, destroying. The letter Tet in Hebrew, which is the second letter of Satan, the T, equivalent mm -hmm. of the T in English, stands for a snake or a serpent. Again, very damaging, mm -hmm. very low creature that we know since the inception of history. And the last letter in the word Satan is Nun. And the word Nun, that word means fish. And it did look like a fish darting in water. Mm -hmm. So the ancient picture of Nun was really basically the water. And this is an early, early, early symbol in Judaism, the Nun. And it symbolizes basically for us life. A fish darting in clear water symbolizing life. That's why it was adopted mm -hmm. by the early Jews as a symbol, because it symbolizes life. Now look at Satan in the word pictures. The first one, we have the snake that devours life. The oh. snake that destroys life. And if you take words, even the word hatred, it still has the same letter. letter. The word hatred came from the word Satan in Hebrew. Deep hatred is sitna. Same word as Satan with the he in the end. So that word, it's a verb in Hebrew, uh, means that's, deep hatred. And that's back to the Genesis story again. Right in the garden is that animosity. Yes. There will always yes. be that animosity yes. between... Evil uh, animosity, and exactly. You, and you know, sometimes our Jewish people say they don't believe in Satan, but Satan, it's a Hebrew word. Well, they do believe this in Satan because it, it's, it's already founded and it's written. We know about Satan here. We know about Satan in the book. We know about the Satan. But that he's alive and well today. Oh, yes, and he's <laughs> interfering in life. Mm -hmm. There is certain, well, the attitude in the Jewish circles of Satan yeah. is... Um, contemptuous respect. Can you put them together, contempt and respect at the same time? Well, I read a very fascinating um, document. Document In the book of Matthew, I read, there is an argument between Yeshua and the Satan. Satan right? And if you look at it, and you just try to, without getting to the religious part, see what happens there. He talks to him and he answers him by quoting from the Old Testament, right. which is the, he respects the power, but on the other hand, it still God has, has the, said. Yeah, but it still has the contempt to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a contemptuous respect. Satan is something that, you know, you can fear of, 
But if you have God in your heart, there is no Satan can really reach you. That's yes. the attitude that you can see. Draw Not near to fear. God, resist the devil, and he has to flee from you. Yes. Now, let's come to another word that we talked of, one of my favorite words in Hebrew, shalom. That also... Okay. <laughs> All right. So we make a kind of a transition from the mm -hmm. evil, the bad, to, to the something good, very yeah. nice. But there, in the word shalom, if we stay in the word pictures of the word shalom, there is a mentioning of something which is chaos. Water is, uh, as we mentioned before, but the letter mem is really the water, mime. Nun mm -hmm. is the fish darting in water. Right. That so that's nun. life. That's life. But mem is also could be life or chaos because it's mime. Look at the word shalom. The word shalom in the word picture, you would see there um, destroying the sheen is a right. destroying. Destroy the authority, the uh -huh. authority is again is the, the lamed, right? Uh -huh. the, the staff uh -huh. of the shepherd. They, they destroy the authority that connects or they put together, that holds together, that's the vav, right. nail, holds together, a chaos. Hmm. So shalom is the de destroying the authority that holds together chaos. Bringing, bringing the chaos to a complete right. destruction and in the New about. Covenant terms, that would be tearing down principalities and powers that war against our flesh. Our flesh. And that's what you, you see there, too. Uh -huh. The word shalom, though, in terms of meaning, coming from the word shalem in Hebrew. And that means completeness, mm -hmm. wholeness, shalem, the word shalem. And, if and, you, and you shared something with us about one of our questions that we had about Yeshua's final words at the time of sacrifice. Oh, the yeah, yeah, the word leshalem. Oh, ah, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm asked many times the question, what's the word there in the Hebrew? Um, when in Greek it's tetelestai. It is finished. It, it is finished. And in, in English it is finished. It's finished. Yeah. And in Hebrew, I looked at the, at the translation back from Greek to Hebrew in those in the versions that are, the two versions. Mm -hmm. It says tam venishlam. Nishlam means has been completed, but also means in Hebrew had been paid for. Mm. Completed and paid for the same. How? Look at modern Hebrew. Shalem is complete, whole. Shalem also means to pay, to pay for something. Same word, same word, two meanings. One is to pay with money, right. with assets for something, and it also means complete. But look at that. Let's say a person is indebted to somebody else. Is there peace between them? No. You can feel the tension if there is a big mm -hmm. debt on part of somebody else to you until it's being paid and it's completed and then you are in shalem, again in wholeness, in completeness. I mean, many people know what is the feeling to sit with a with person in a room that you know that this person owes you a certain, a large amount of money and nobody talks about it. It's so no uneasy. Tension. Uneasy. Yeah. It's yeah. not in peace. It's not in equilibrium. The thing is not resting because there is, it's not shalem yet because there's still, uh -huh. one person need to le shalem, pay. But look at that great word, leads us to the great city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, oh. listen to the word, there is the salem, shalem in that word. Completeness, wholeness again. And the first part of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Yeru, all the J's in English are ye in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Yeru has two meanings in Hebrew. Again, two meanings. One, they will see, they, the nations, will see. The other one of Yeru, Yeru, means they will feel the ah. Of shalem, shalem is completeness, wholeness. So the nations will feel the completeness, the completeness or the wholeness of, of whom? God. Of God, because He dwells in this city. He says in lamentation, "This is my dwelling city. I will dwell in Jerusalem." So they will see the completeness, or they will ah, they will feel the ah of the completeness. This is what Jerusalem is about: the completeness of God. The nations recognizing the completeness of God in that city, or they will awe the power of the Almighty in his city. My kids Jerusalem. would say, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Jamie, the letter Sheen is indeed an awesome letter and has layer upon layer of meaning. And our program wouldn't do this letter justice. Where shall we begin? Well, let's begin with these beautiful roses that I picked from my garden. The word in Hebrew is Shoshanim. My favorite flower, I love them. Now, concerning what Dr. Ben Gigi said about the word picture for sheen being teeth, the Hebrew word for tooth is shen, and it is spelled the same as sheen. They are both spelled sheen, yud, nun. And the points of the letter sheen, the three points, look like flames, and 
they also consume, as Dr. Ben Gigi pointed out. And the word for fire, esh, ends with the letter sheen. And another great fire, the sun, Shemesh, also begins with the letter sheen. Three places in the Holy Scripture, God is called a consuming fire. Deuteronomy 4.24, 9.3, and Hebrews 12.29. The God of Sheen, a holy God, is to be feared and revered. He's also a jealous God who even appeared to his servant Moshe in a burning bush. And Sheen's numerical value also has connections to fire. As you'll see on your Hebrew jewels card, the numerical value for Sheen is 300. And remember when Gideon... Mm -hmm. 300 men with flaming torches. Uh -huh. And then there was Samson, Samson yeah. who oh. tied something to foxes' tails. Ah, flaming torches. Right. Okay, both to 300 foxes and mm -hmm. 300 men. And th this is just so exciting. That's why we've prepared this jewels card for you, Hebrew jewels. It has the letters. It has their numerical values. You can download a copy free from our website at jewishjewels.org. Simply select the Resources drop-down menu and then choose the Aleph Bet card. The Aleph Bet card will teach you how to pronounce each Hebrew letter and vowel and will also teach you a few basic Hebrew blessings. Remember, that's jewishjewels.org, then Resources, and select Aleph Bet. Now let's consider another fascinating thought about sheen and fire that has to do with the Feast of Shavuot. Shavuot means weeks in Hebrew and is usually called Pentecost in English. At Shavuot, traditional Jews celebrate the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. This happened amidst fires. Listen, Exodus 19, 17 says, And Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. fire. In the Brit HaDashah, we read about the Shavuot following the death and resurrection of Yeshua in Acts chapter 2. In the day of Pentecost, the Shavuot had fu fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the Ruach HaKodesh, those flames looking like the letter Sheen. Hmm, interesting. You know, not long ago we spoke to Moshe, a traditional Orthodox Jew at Shur Hashim, his gift shop in Jerusalem. Shur Hashim, another Sheen word, is Hebrew for roots. We asked Moshe to share his understanding of one of the most important words in the Hebrew language that begins with sheen, Shaddai. Our tradition, the Orthodox Jewish tradition, makes a point of revealing to us that God has 70 names. If you follow through the Bible, you'll see that there are 70 names for God. Each name of God represents a different relationship God has with mankind. Uh, there's a God of justice, the God of mercy. Shaddai is one of those names, and that's the name that denotes the Almighty God who works within nature, who, who moves within nature, who creates miracles within nature. Uh, in fact, the, the concept, according to our rabbis, is uh, El Shaddai is the God who she'amar dai, who said enough, set limits to the world, set limits by which we live within the world, and it is within that subtlety that God has found. So his almightiness, his awesomeness, um, is found within the limits of our own human existence. Uh, and that is one of the names that, that exists. It's interesting that uh, when God reveals himself at Mount Sinai, and when he breaks through the limits of nature, he says, I have not revealed myself as yud Hey vav Hey is his name Till now, till now is always El Shaddai. Everything I've done with your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was in, within the limits of nature. Now I'm going to break through that. Now you're going to see the awesome hidden God in a way you've never seen him before. What is the connection between El Shaddai and Shad, the word for breast? There is, is there a, a concept. Connection? There is a concept that has been sort of added on after, since the word for breast means the, the one who gives sustenance, and since the name Shakai, El Shakai or El Shaddai in its original, um, represents God working within nature. All of nature is there to give us the sustenance wherein we can live a life glorifying God. And in the relationship that we have as Orthodox Jews every day, we look to nature to find God in its 
in his subtlety, in, in, in the birth of a child or the growth of a flower. And that sustains us for walking in the more ethereal and spiritual realms. Why is Shaddai on mezuzahs? And is it on all mezuzot or only on some? Every mezuzah has Shaddai on it, uh, on, the, on, the, on the parchment itself. Um, and many of them will also have the Shaddai on the box that carries it. And if you look at the letters for Shin Dalet Yud, it's actually an acronym for Shomer Dlatot Israel, He who guards the doors of Israel. That's the first in Psalms. As a result, since the mezuzah represents our home, our limits, our existence, our almost temple that we've set up within our home, um, it's appropriate that that is the name that represents our entry into that home. And since it relates to that acronym in the verse in Psalms, where Shin Dalit Yud is he who guards the doors of Israel, it's the most appropriate for that uh, purpose. Thank you, Moshe. The next time you're in Jerusalem, be sure to visit Moshe and his brother Dov in their shop, Shorashim. They welcome questions from believers, both Jew and non-Jew. El Shaddai, the omnipotent master of the universe, is the one who set boundaries. For example, for the ocean, he said, stop, it's enough. You know, it's interesting because the word for enough is die. Remember Dayenu from Passover? It's found in El Shaddai, the God who is enough, all-sufficient, unlimited, powerful. I love that word, Shaddai. When we're in covenant with him, we are joined to a God for whom nothing is impossible. Jamie, would you pass me one of the mezuzah, please? Mm, I have two beautiful ones here. Look, this one has jewels, and this is nice. Here we have a mezuzah with a large sheen on it. The scroll inside contains a passage from the scriptures, which also begins with the letter sheen. Shema, the Hebrew word for hear. Shema Yisrael, hero Israel, which, by the way, the Hebrew concept always includes the idea of obeying. Yes, it does. You know, mezuzot, it's really an art form. There's so many beautiful ones. And um, part of the scripture inside the mezuzah tells us to love God with all our heart, soul, and might. You find that in Deuteronomy chapter 6. The three heads of the sheen remind us of that command. I love it, with all our heart, soul, and might. Our good friend, Elaine Caruso of Zion's Rose Ministries, now joins us with the prophetic insights on Sheen. Elaine's banners have blessed us week after week. She also has an entire Rhapsody, teachings, and multimedia presentation for each letter of the Aleph Bet. You can reach her at the address on your screen. Tell us about this Sheen banner. Okay. Well, at the bottom, we actually have a pictorial of the earth, and this represents the book of Daniel, when the three men would not worship King Nebuchadnezzar, which was false, idolatrous worship. And they allowed themselves, they said, well, if God delivers us, great. If he doesn't, that's fine. And so we know that they were thrown into the furnace. Mm -hmm. And we know that Yeshua was the fourth that looked like unto the Son of God. So we actually have a sheen on the three men that God spared, and then Yeshua, the silver one, because he's the redeemer of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but all car cardiologists have discovered that the sheen is actually an x-ray picture on the human heart. Everyone has the sheen. We on do? their x-ray yes yes and so we have <laughs> yes <laughs> so we have the sheen on there because sheen is the heart of god and certainly the heart of god was to spare his people who did not bow down to a false god absolutely and this also around the earth here represents second peter 3 when god is going to renovate the earth with fire mm -hmm. and there will be no taint of sin or rebellion and the new heavens and the new earth through the sheen the sheen actually represents the consumption of god is three-pronged the word picture is teeth just like as a teeth destroys uh, the food and, and and grinds it to nothing mm -hmm. we know that uh, yeshua will actually grind those to powder who reject him as the chief cornerstone so we need to fall on him fall on the stone he's the light of the world and he's also the light of the olam haba the world to come he's the ner yashua mm -hmm. He is a Shekhinah. Mm. He's the divine manifest presence and glory. He's the Kavod Adonai himself. Absolutely. I have one other word. He's the Shalom. Yes, he is. He's the Sar Shalom. Sar Shalom. Yes, Prince right. El Shaddai, the all-breasted one, the one who nourishes at the breast, full provision. And tell me about the mezuzot that surround the uh, edges. Well, even now, our Torah observant people always have a mezuzah on their doorpost. They kiss it in reverence as they enter and as they exit. And we know in the kingdom age, our people Israel will also be the carriers of the word of God, even as the word of God is inherent within the mezuzah. Many people who are not Jewish have also decided to put a mezuzah on their doorpost to show their reverence for the word of God. The mezuzah with a sheen on it 
represents the nurturing or peaceful aspect of the letter Sheen. And that brings us to a wonderful word, Shalom. The word picture for Shalom tells us that peace or wholeness is only possible when we destroy the authority that holds chaos together. In other words, we have to deal with the root cause that is preventing our peace, our Shalom, in order to have perfect peace, Shalom, Shalom. In Israel today, people wish each other shalom when they greet and shalom when they part. They even ask each other, how's your peace? Literally, how is your well-being? Mashlamcha to a man or mashlamech to a woman. This is because in the Hebrew mind, peace is much more than the absence of war. It is wholeness on all levels, healing of body, of soul, of mind, of spirit, even shalom in your bones. Yeah, I love that. One day, Yerushalayim will be a city of peace. Until then, we encourage you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Hebrew, that's Sha'alu Shlom Yerushalayim. That peace is Jerusalem's destiny. It's even seen in the city's topography when viewed from the air. Three narrow valleys run north and south and connect at the southern edge of the city. For this reason, some have even called Jerusalem the mezuzah of the world. And that's why we've prepared this Hebrew jewels card for you with the Hebrew alphabet and the Hebrew vowels, some Hebrew prayers, and some Hebrew word pictures. You can download a copy free from our website at jewishjewels.org. Simply select the resources drop-down menu and then choose the Aleph Bet card. The Aleph Bet card will teach you how to pronounce each Hebrew letter and vowel and will also teach you a few basic Hebrew blessings. Remember, that's jewishjewels.org then resources, and select Aleph Bet. There's another name of God that begins with Sheen that we haven't mentioned yet. It's found in the prophet Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6. Now Isaiah wrote this 700 years approximately before the birth of Yeshua. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Pele Yoetz, Mighty God, El Gibor, Everlasting Father, Avi Ad, Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom. Jamie, it's really interesting that the Hebrew word Sar, which really is prince, but it's the origin of the word for a person in a high position in many other languages. It's the root of Sir in English, of Mijur in French, of Kaiser in German, of Tsar in Russian, and Caesar in Latin. But who is this Tsar Shalom that the prophet is speaking about? He is the one who has the power to destroy the authority that establishes chaos. Yeshua is the Tsar Shalom. He makes us complete. Through him we have peace with God, and he destroys the chaos in your life, if you let him. He saves us from the devourer, and he paid the debt of our sin in full, Tam Venishlam. He gives us eternal life, and he's all we need, Dayenu. And listen to what Yeshua said to his Talmudim, to his students, right before he went to be killed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And again he said this to them, I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again I leave the world to go to the Father. He knew where he was going. I hope you do too. And this is what he said. Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. And these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yes, he has. And the first thing that Yeshua said to his disciples after his resurrection from the dead was, Shalom Aleichem. And that's still his message today. We want to pray for shalom to descend on your house today so that you can have peace that the Bible says passes all understanding. It comes through the Sar Shalom, Yeshua, the Prince of Peace. I know that uh, many of you have homes where there's chaos, where there's strife, husband against wife, parents fighting with children, in-laws, um, neighbors, on the job there's lack of peace. That's what God's gift is to each one of us, shalom, shalom, through the Prince of Peace. Father, I pray that our friends today, right now, will experience that shalom. Open your heart to the Prince of Peace. Say, Yeshua, I need you. I need that shalom. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Sar Shalom, my Prince of Peace. Lord, I thank you that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You will answer the cry of that heart, and you will pronounce peace in Yeshua's name, in that home, in that life, today. You are my 
Shit.